Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part six of Robot X, the reconfigurable sci-fi themed walking robot. Before we get on with the project this time, I'd like to tell you about a new sci-fi series. Now, a lot of people fund my projects on Patreon, which is how these things get built. And one of my patrons, Jason, has got his own sci-fi series called Alice, The Last Founder, which he's working on at the moment. And you can check out argoforce.com for more details. It's written in monthly installments, and the story follows a young baby girl and her parents who are on the run from a secret organisation from an alternate dimension. The baby girl is destined to become a founding member of Argo Force, a group of superhero time travellers. There are many who want to stop her from happening. So go and subscribe at argoforce.com and see how she grows with each episode. Now Jason is going to be self-publishing some books next year, but the rest of the story is available online. And you can also donate to Jason's Patreon campaign himself if you'd like to, and I've put the links for both of those in the description to this video. The aim of this project is to build a bipedal walking robot, which we've got quite some way with, and then we're going to dress it up as different sci-fi characters. The first of which will be Bender from Futurama, and after that we'll go to an audience vote to see what other characters it should be, and obviously we can put shells over it and so on to make it pretty much any character. We've got quite a way of what we're making it walk, so we've got three inertial measurement units that fitted last time to give it some rudimentary stability, and I had it kind of walking from leg to leg on the spot, which doesn't work too badly, we've got some tune-up to do there, but also its feet are quite slippery, so the first thing I want to do in this episode is give it some grippy feet, and then go back and kind of tune it up again gradually and see if we can get faster, smaller steps. The original feet pads are just uh, basically these circles of... Um sort of round plastic really, printed in Colour Fab HT, so I'm now going to print some things in Ninja Flex, which are these T-shaped things that'll fit on each corner of the bottom of the foot, with recessed uh, socket cap screws there to attach to the 2020 extrusion, and we'll get those printed in Ninja Flex, so we need eight of those, and we can print those on the Lulzbot Mini with a Flexi Struder. So we're printing this on the Lulzbot Mini with the Flexi Struder, and you can see that's a fairly low density infill. It should be quite squashy, but hopefully with the wall thickness and the top and bottom it should be quite firm, as well as that sort of uh, serration we've got with the lumps on the uh, wall will in fact be the bottom, so I'll have to print one and see how it comes out. Okay, here's one of them, so uh, yeah, it's pretty squashy, but not too much, it's still quite firm, and when the load is spread on four of those on each foot, that should be perfect. Here they are all fitted, the old ones were just these solid round discs. So you can see they're quite grippy, even if the other foot comes off the ground, so we still end up with one uh, stuck on the ground it's putting its weight on, so let's uh, tune that up and get it to move side to side again. Right, so now he's got his rubber feet, I've just configured it up to go a bit faster side to side, so it's just wobbling at um, the speed I think it should, and it seems to do that pretty stably, so it's driving the legs to specific angles and not returning till they get there, and also using that upper body stability we had last time to try and keep the whole thing stable on top of that, so that seems to be working pretty well. So not going too bad with its grippy feet. Whoops, apart from that. A few adjustments to make still. One problem I am having is it's leaning backwards and forwards quite a lot here, which isn't really helping. Well, I'm going to have to stop that. So you can see it rocking backwards and forwards, and that's because the uh, PID controller is in the legs. The legs are getting bent very slightly because the actuators are loose, and then they're trying to go back the other way to get to the right angle, so we're building up this momentum, especially when it's uh, stepping from side to side. So it's actually making it quite hard to tune up. So the first thing I'm going to do is put in the front to back stability with an actuator that pushes this body backwards and forwards, and you can see I've got my barbell weights back on here again, 
we can increase that mass as we need to. So at the moment, the front to back axis of the body is locked uh, with these brackets, and if I undo them, the whole thing pivots around the point down here. So the plan was to put another motor in the back here with a lead screw in, not that, which is a bit of studding, and have that push the axis backwards and forwards with another nut riding up and something built onto here. Right, here it is. So we've got another one of those motor mounts printed on either side there, grabbing it. We've got a pivot point down here, the lead screw, and a thing there with a nut in attached to that bar. So I need to fit a feedback pot here so we can get feedback on the angle around uh, this axis here, but there's not very much space to put it. These things need to move eventually, so I don't really want to put it on the end. And I don't want to put it in the middle there because I need to put an actuator here that actually splits the legs. So I need to find another location for it. Okay, I've mounted it here with this uh, crank that goes to the thing here. So as this moves, it moves the pot, which will probably be okay, although it's a bit nasty. Around the back here, we've got another motor driver for that motor. The wires go off to the electronics at the front. We've got its own enable switch there, as well as that enable switch being linked to the big emergency stop enable. Got another power switch and a separate battery, which just lives in here at the moment that I need to Velcro in, and another little readout telling me there's 12.5 volts on it. And at the front, both the pot are wired into 3.3 volts. The uh, analog in, which is in fact here on the breakout, if you remember I left two analog ins for that axis and the leg splitting axis. And I'm using the PWM straight out of the Arduino to drive the motor, because I don't have any slots left on my 16 channel board. So I've now set this motor up with the pot I put on the front to be a servo. So um, at the moment I've set the position to be zero. So if we wind this back a bit, wind the body back and turn on the motor enable, it should shoot to that zero position and we can define whatever that position is uh, so we can position the body front to back. There we go. So uh, basically we're gonna use the IMU we put in the body last time that you can maybe just see down there flashing away. And that's gonna drive that position to try and keep the robot stable back to front the same as it does side to side. So I'm now using the position of the IMU in the body in the front to back axis to position that servo. So if we turn this on again, we should be to see it trying to balance and um, it's tuned up quite tight at the moment, so, um, or a bit sharp or whatever you want to call that. There's a little bit of an oscillation, but you can see as I push this, it actually moves the body in the direction of travel, which pushes the robot back the other way because it's using this mass to uh, stay stable with inertia, basically, by trying to keep the mass still and push the robot the other way. So that should stop it wobbling. If I turn that off and do it again, we can see we get this sort of thing. If I do it with that turned on, it dampens it sort of quickly, so we need to look at some tuning on that and possibly increase the mass, but we'll see how that goes. So I've decided I need some hard end stops on those feet, so that obviously the rubber is squashy, so I'm making a slightly higher, at least one mil off the ground when the rubber is not squashed, these kind of um, end stops and slight extensions to the feet here. And the beauty of the 2020 extrusion is we can just bolt on pieces as we go. So um, I can bolt on some bits here and see how it goes. And then I can print other ones and reduce them or slide them along as I want to reduce them. So we're going to put these on the outside of the feet. There'll be three on each foot. And uh, hopefully that'll help keep it a bit more stable, at least till it learns to walk. Here are two of those parts printed in Tallman Alloy 910 and I'm printing straight on the glass here with a Yoohoo glue stick for adhesion. These prints are pretty long, I'm printing at 50 millimeters a second, so uh, we're up to three hours so far, so I think this is gonna be four and a half to five hours. Here they are, they're pretty big. Um, they only extend the foot this way by 20 mil and 20 mil front and back. So obviously these could be um, slid in. These things will slide in the slots. This could be reduced or taken off completely as I go, but let's get it walking first. And this will help out quite a lot, I think. The feet are still grippy, of course. And these are one millimeter off the ground all the way around. So if that squashes by a millimeter, then it hits the hard end stop that should help with stability. So doing some more work on the front to back stability, what I've now done is taken that body IMU and uh, built that to actually operate the leg motors and the axis that hinge backwards and forwards. So now in fact, if I give this a shove, as well as the body moving in that direction, you'll notice the leg joints actually move and it actually moves in the direction I push it and then it stabilizes itself with both the body and those leg joints to dampen the, um, the rock there. 
and it doesn't oscillate at all. It's pretty good. It's even better than the side to side I had action I had last time. Obviously, if I turn this off now and give it a shove, we get all sorts of uh, rocking there, even with those stabilizers on the feet. But turn it on again, and it's stable. So that's pretty good. I think we've killed the rock. However, if you're watching carefully in the last bit of testing footage when it fell over that way, you'll notice that in fact what happened was the ankle did actually bend over. It didn't tip over on its ankle with the foot straight, the ankle actually went with it. And that's for a specific reason that I need to solve. So this is my current PID controller layout. So we've got uh, a PID at the each ankle and hip side to side. And those are driven by the pots and they drive the motors based on the position. On top of that, we've got the ones that drive the legs to a specific angles and they take the inertial measurement units on each leg. Um, so we can actually set the angles of each of these. And then we've got one in the body there, which deals with overall side to side stability. And that drives the angles that the legs are being driven to. So that's all well and good, but it does mean we've got the same influence here over these PID controllers on both the ankle and the hip here to drive to specific angles. So that means when the hip moves to try and stay stable or otherwise, it moves the ankle by the same amount. So the new plan here is to just add an extra PID controller at this level so that we can influence the hip and the ankle by different amounts and we can also put different gains in at this point so we can say the ankle doesn't go so crazy as a hip and basically it doesn't move as far so it doesn't tip over even if it's really unstable. So it's only taking little steps but it's much more consistent and we've got that front to back stability as well as the side to side stability. So you can't quite see it, but um, let's have a closer look at that so you can see the actuator moving if we look around the back. So you can see that actuator turning only it's turning a really small amount because it doesn't need to do much to balance because the legs are helping and everything's helping and it's completely dynamic in motion. If I give this a shove, it no longer rocks or does anything silly, even if I try, it stabilizes itself even when it's in motion. So that seems to be working out really well. So obviously it's only taking tiny steps, but it is actually lifting the foot off the ground there. So let's see what we can do about that. So one issue I've got with moving this more side to side and taking bigger steps is I've had to turn up the gain on the axis that bend the legs. And um, actually that's causing me the same problem I had with the front to back with the actuators being slightly slack and then it causing it to oscillate. So if I just turn this on and we give it a shove side to side, we can see the knees bend and it keeps it wobbling for a little bit and you can actually see the actuators moving slightly here. Um, and they're all doing it basically, all, all eight of them in response to that. And it actually keeps itself wobbling for a bit. So this is a bit of a problem. So what I need to do um, is use that side-to-side -side IMU to try and modify these um, actuators to modify the actual knee positions to try and absorb the load the same as we did front to back. So I've now coded up the knees so they bend, the leg bends in the direction it's leaning. So if I pick this up, we should see that if I bend it this way, the right leg goes straighter and the left leg bends and that's the other way round. So the result of this now, of course, is some full stability. So uh, if I give this to shove this way, it's leg bends and it absorbs the load, maybe a bit too much. The same that way, and obviously front to back still works. So I can push this around in any direction really. And it should kind of absorb the load by bending its legs. Its body still moves front to back. There's a little bit of an oscillation, so it's tuned up a bit too much, but You can see its legs bending and it absorbing the load, whatever I do to it there. So hopefully now we've got kind of full stability and we've compensated for the actuator wobble. Not sure why it's stuck on that side. Yeah, I need to look at that, but basically we can tune that up and hopefully that'll make it walk super well, but let's see what happens. And just in case you haven't been following along, the motors here are lead screws here in drill motors, so they are not back drivable. I cannot force those to go in and out by pushing them. So when I'm pushing the robot around there, it's actually reacting by measuring the angle in space and making all the motors move accordingly to dampen the movement. Right, I've finally broken one of those, which um, I'm surprised they lasted this long actually, but um, they were printed with the layer lines going this way. So this is the weak spot. Um, and you can see that's just snapped there. So I've actually printed a replacement, which I printed in this orientation. So the other way around, instead of printing it like this on the bed, 
So the layer lines run that way, so it should be much stronger. It's still Color Fab HT, I've just run out of gray, so any more parts I have to print because they break uh, will be white and you'll be able to see how that goes. So there we have the first shuffling step backwards. It's a bit out of control, but it does tend to stabilize itself in the end. So in those bits of footage, I was basically tuning up as I go, making minor adjustments, but also the battery was going slightly flat as it went, which probably had an influence, so we still need to do something about power regulation. Now, the other issues you'll see there are stopping and starting. Obviously, it doesn't start up very well unless I give it a little push to start with. So what we need to do is have it kind of lean side to side before it starts taking steps, or make the first lean much bigger to take the first step, but that's only really code that we need to write. The other thing is stopping, so when I was just flicking the switch off on the remote to stop the state machine, if I was doing that as it was leaning away from the middle, then it didn't have anything to bring it back so it'd fall over, and if I switched it when it was leaning back, then it finished quite gracefully, and in some cases that worked really well, and it's almost uh, better than I could have coded just by the coincidence of the dynamics that are in there. It's stabilizing itself and putting both its feet in the middle, but that's purely coincidental. The other issue, of course, is that it walks backwards, and I haven't programmed it to do that, um, other than programming in the stability. So, of course, probably what's happening is the mass is um, slightly distributed backwards, what with that motor on the back and these um, barbell weights, and we've got two kilograms on each side now. So um, I think what I need to do is shift that forward, or well, it would be good if it had little arms and it could move the mass forward and backwards, so it's a bit like driving a Segway, and when you lean it forward it automatically walks forwards, and I can sort of stabilise that in the middle. That's going to be quite an ordeal to build, so I'll probably make some fixed means of moving the mass forward and back to start, at least to centre it. And it's an interesting concept to get it to walk forwards and backwards using its own stability. In the end it will of course actually be programmed to push the feet back and kick a leg forward to take bigger steps. But I'm pretty happy it actually goes along, and in the end I managed to get it to work fairly consistently, apart from me switching the switch off at the end and it falling over. So that's actually all I'm going to do in this episode, but don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more updates on this project, some of my other robotics projects, and also check out my Patreon campaign at patreon.com xrobots, where you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including all my videos early and a live broadcast with me. Also check out my Spreadshirt t-shirt stores, where you can get a limited edition t-shirt design that will expire at the end of March 2017, and hopefully there'll be another one after that if you're watching in the future. Alright, that's all for now. 